Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. So pleased to introduce to you my friend Kim Flynn. She's an author, speaker, and business consultant for women. How are you this morning, Kim? Hey, good. I'm so glad to oh, be wonderful. here. Thanks oh, I'm for so having pleased me. to have you here. Thank you for joining yes. us. I, I, uh, discussing women in business is one of my favorite mm -hmm. things to go over. I think it's such a valuable part of what makes up Utah. Really, we have such a strong mm -hmm. on, entrepreneurial spirit here. And I'm excited to share your background with our viewers, which is what Thank we'll you. jump right into. Thank you. you started off as a school teacher. I did. I got the most unconventional business education mm -hmm. ever <laughs> as a school teacher. I taught junior high and high school English mm -hmm. and uh, I found that the best training for entrepreneurship is just on the job training. Mm -hmm. So I jumped in my first business was a tutoring business I started when I was 23 years that old. That is incredible. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> I mean, I'm a little bit older than that right now, but I just think, I, I don't even know if I was in the mindset at that <laughs> age. I mean, so you started reasonably early. Yeah, I did. Actually, my very first business ever was when I was 12 years old. Oh, okay. So <laughs> yeah, I got back further. My, my dad found these like wholesale makeup kits and they were like brown and green eyeshadow. Uh -huh. And I would buy them for $3 wholesale <laughs> and sell them for $7 around the neighborhood. Did it work? Yeah, I thought he it was making a killing. You must such a cute child oh. because everyone's like, oh, sure. They felt sorry for me. They're like, oh, the poor, the poor Smith girl. <laughs> <laughs> that is so great. So tell me, what, where, when did that transition happen as a school teacher? Mm -hmm. What kind of was happening in your mind to make you think, you know, I want to change what I'm doing. I want to move forward and, and consult yeah. women in business. Do you know, I always thought, um, and a lot of women feel the same way, I am a woman, I'm going to have children one day, so I need to have a career that fits with children. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be either a nurse, a school teacher, or a hairdresser. That's like the classic three for women, right? <laughs> and so I'm kind of on a mission to help women realize you can do what Whatever it is you want to do, we're not limited at all. And that kind of goes along with yeah. the next thing. Why are mm -hmm. you so passionate about this, specifically uh, in, in relation to women doing, in essence, kind of what you mm -hmm. did? Um, I have a client right now. I'll tell you a story. I have a client right now. I've been working with her for about a year. And she came to me about a year ago, and she was an energy healer. Now, there's nothing wrong with being an energy healer, but it usually doesn't pay the bills, let's mm -hmm. be honest here. Um, and so after going through my programs and, and learning what she needed to do, she is now a, um, she writes employee manuals, which is so great. And it's actually a product that has a market, which is fantastic, right? And so she is able to not only, you know, live this big, beautiful life, but she's able to provide for her family. Ah, that's incredible. That to me is so, so important. That must be so fulfilling. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot even imagine having, a, having a, a job like yours where you get to give people these tools. Well, they, they them give rise. themselves these tools. Like oh, they have to do better. the work. They have to do uh -huh. the work. So it's, it's all on them. But um, this woman is a single mom. She's got mm -hmm. a six-year-old daughter. And for the first time ever, she has a plan of how to provide for her family. She's closing on six to $10,000 deals. She could never do that as an energy healer. And again, nothing wrong with being an energy healer, but it does not pay the bills. Oh, and so I'm incredible. passionate about teaching women uh, to go into business business models that, that work, that mm -hmm. work and, and, and applying that's, that's skills. And that's a very so. important thing to bring mm -hmm. up because, off, I mean, it, it, it's great when your passion aligns with something that it's makes great a when lot of passion money, there, but huh? sometimes you kind of need someone to lead you and direct you in a way that, uh, you know, still is your passion mm -hmm. that utilizes some of your talents, but like you said, gives you that bottom line, gives yeah. you the ability to, to, to live more fully in certain yeah. ways. So that's so know, wonderful. That's actually one of the differences between men and women in business. Mm. Men go into business generally because they want to make money, right? Well, there's nothing, yeah. nothing wrong with that. Women Women go into business, they want to serve, they want to help, they want to inspire, they want to leave the world a better place, which is great unless <laughs> you're, you're not looking at your business model and saying, is this a viable business model? I know it serves, but is it an actual business model? And am I applying actual business skills to this business model? Mm -hmm. So that's something I want to really encourage women to increase and improve. Ah, that's, that's an incredible difference. I don't think one that we would often think of, but that's very interesting, the distinction. It's, it's, there. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very prevalent. So along with that, uh, can you give us maybe a few ideas or what are some common mistakes that you see people making, either when they approach you and say, hey, Kim, I need some help with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. How can you direct me? Or maybe some course corrections that you've had to do with clients. Yeah, some of the most common mistakes that women make are um, your average woman entrepreneur, as they're growing in business, they reach about the $250,000 mark 
and women stop. It's mm -hmm. like this glass ceiling, whether it's self-imposed or whether society is oppressing us and putting that putting us down. I really don't care what the reason is. The result and the, the solution is the same. The solution is we have to step up and just say, do you know what? I'm going to play big. And when I reach that 250K mark, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue to push my comfort zone. I'm going to continue to go further. Mm -hmm. So describe <coughs> what you mean by playing big because that's kind of as many a general term where they mm -hmm. think well I mean you know try my hardest do my best but it's more than that well what does that really involve I think it's living life without limits without yeah. saying this I can only play this big I can only do this thing um, a lot of people I know me included used to think well some people were given like this special sauce, like Oprah. She's given special <laughs> sauce. I, How does she I do don't have the that, special yeah. sauce, so therefore I can't do big things. Oh. And living big is just saying, do you know what? This is what I want to do. I want to do big things. I'm going to just go for it. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. So, so last thing, what are areas of, uh, of business or what are the areas of business that certain people should focus on when mm -hmm. it comes on where or, or when it rather comes to where they should spend most of their time. There's so many areas you want to focus on. Yes. How do you divvy up that time and where do you know where to focus? Well, your average entrepreneur says, well, I am gifted and talented in this uh, topic, so therefore mm -hmm. I'm going to become a business owner in this topic. So let's say you're a good cook. You're like, I'm going to open I a, wish. A, a, <laughs> 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 too. I'm going to open a catering okay. business, for example, yeah. you know, something like that. And they go into business because they love the, the actual product of the business. And that's a big mistake. Um, there's a big difference between skills of a cook and skills of a business owner obviously mm -hmm. they're they're night and day so even if you went into business because you love the topic you're going to have to hire that out i know it's painful and you're <laughs> going to have to learn leadership and marketing and sales and those are the skills i want you to focus on in your business all right very and hire good. out the rest even if it's the most fun part uh, some very good tips and you can get so much more than that by getting in touch with kim you do workshops you do private <coughs> consulting and we can find out more online yes go to kimflynn.com there's actually a free video e-course there excellent again it's kimflynn.com very good well kim thank you thank so much you. For joining us Thanks this morning. for having me. Be sure me. to get in touch with Kim. It was a pleasure to Thank have you, you. Thanks Appreciate very much. Appreciate it. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break when we do Avalanche Baseball. We'll be in studio.